Let's talk about 21 iOS 16 settings you need to turn on right away. These settings are game changers, and one of them could literally save your life. When I worked at the Apple store, I used to tell customers that iPhones can't get viruses. That isn't exactly true nowadays. Let's open up the settings app, scroll down and tap general, then tap software update. Tap on automatic updates at the top of the screen and make sure security responses and system files is turned on. This will automatically update your iPhone when Apple discovers a threat that warrants a rapid security response. Obviously, you don't want to leave your iPhone exposed to hackers for any longer than you need to. Now that your iPhone is secure, let's make your internet safer too. Let's go back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap on Safari and then scroll down to prevent cross-site tracking. Facebook uses the share and like buttons you see on websites to track you, even when you don't use them at all. Prevent cross-site tracking stops those companies from collecting data about you. Turn that switch on. Another quick Safari setting you need to turn on is one above, it's closed tabs, tap on that, by default, set to manually. When this is set to manually, you could wind up with hundreds of tabs open. That is not an exaggeration. Just to be clear, tabs are totally fine, but when you have too many open, it's gonna slow down your iPhone and drain your battery. I like choosing after one month. To see how many tabs you have open on your iPhone, go to Safari, then press and hold on the tab button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Tap that, close all six tabs. You just sped up your iPhone and saved some battery life. Way to go, David. Speaking of battery life, there's another new setting in iOS 16 that lets you keep an eye on how fast you're using your battery. Let's go back to the settings app. Tap back to Safari, back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap battery. Then at the top of the screen, battery percentage, you can turn that switch on. People with iPhones with Face ID have been asking for this for years. It still isn't supported on the mini models yet, but we think Apple will roll that out soon. Next, let's tap on battery health and just talk about optimized battery charging. That sounds like something you'd want to turn on, right? Wrong. Apple says you need to leave on these three settings to use optimized battery charging. In our opinion, you're better off turning off system customization and significant locations. Instead of turning on optimized battery charging, you might even save more battery life when you do. Also, I don't use optimized battery charging on my iPhone. It still has 98% battery health. Pretty good. Want some sort of an award for that, David? No, but I would really like if you subscribed to the channel. Me too. Wow. In addition to the battery percentage indicator, there's another status bar icon we need to turn on. Let's go back to the main page of settings, tap on privacy and security, tap on location services, scroll down and tap on system services, and then scroll all the way down to status bar icon, turn that on. It's always on for apps. This setting also shows the icon in the status bar when any of these system services uses your location. This next setting is new to iOS 16 and I turned it on immediately. Let's tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, back again, we're going to back to the main page of settings. Then tap accessibility and then tap touch. Scroll down to prevent lock to end call and turn that switch on. Have you ever accidentally hung up on someone by pressing the lock button on your phone? All the time. With iOS 16 and the setting, you can stop that from happening. We think Apple might change the name of the setting that used to be lock to end call, and that was a lot less confusing, at least for me. So if you see lock to end call instead of prevent lock to end call, then turn that switch off. This next setting will make sure the music you listen to is as high quality as possible. Tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap on music, then tap audio quality and turn on the switch next to lossless audio. When we say lossless, we mean CD quality. Apple isn't just gonna come out and say, we've been serving you garbage music for the last 20 years. Or remember those ear pods that came with your first iPod? Well, those were designed to cover up the fact that your music sounded crappy for the last 20 years. Well, let's just stay on track here. We've got three options after turning off this lossless audio switch. Tap on cellular streaming for this. We recommend high quality. Don't wanna burn through your data super quickly with a higher level than that. Tap back for Wi-Fi streaming. Let's get the highest quality possible with high-res lossless. Continue in high-res lossless. Tap back to audio quality one more time for downloads. We recommend lossless. You want your music to sound as good as possible, and you probably also want your phone calls to sound as clear as possible. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap on phone. Then tap Wi-Fi calling and turn that switch on. If you don't see Wi-Fi calling, it means one of two things. One, your cell phone plan doesn't include Wi-Fi calling. And two, 
I didn't believe David when he told me this, but he was right, as usual. You might have to log into your carrier's website and flip a switch to enable Wi-Fi calling before this switch will show up. It's an amazing feature when it works. I turned it off because it kept randomly dropping calls with my friends. Come on, Verizon, let's get it together here. Wi-Fi calling is also a pretty good battery tip, just like these next two settings we're gonna tell you about. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap on accessibility and then tap display and text size. And we're scrolling all the way down. The first one is auto brightness. We know we go through these settings kind of fast. If you join our channel, which is a great way to support us, you can download a PDF version of all the settings we're telling you to turn on in this video. Click the join button below this video to learn more. Back to auto brightness. Apple recommends leaving this on and for good reason, a higher screen brightness means more battery usage. We're leaving it off for this video so it doesn't screw up our side cam, but you should turn it on. One above auto brightness is reduce white point, which reduces the intensity of the brightest colors on your iPhone's display. Yep, so you can turn on reduce white point, you get that slider. Less intense, drag to the right, becomes more intense. We're gonna leave this off for now, but if you want to try it out, you can make your life easier by turning on this next setting. Yep, let's tap back to accessibility, upper left-hand corner of the screen. Scroll down to accessibility shortcut, tap on that, and then choose reduce white point. Now when I triple click the side button, one, two, three, it's on. Let's talk about another great accessibility setting that's new in iOS 16. I love this section of the settings app. Tap back, upper left-hand corner of the screen, one above accessibility shortcut is Siri, tap on that, and there's this new Siri pause time section. Select how long Siri waits for you to finish speaking. Maybe you're like William Shatner. Hey Siri, text Scotty, we need more power. The Klingons are attacking. Send it. The ship, damn it. I won't send it. This setting should help you out. There's another new iOS 16 setting I turned on right away. Let's go back to the main page of the settings app. Scroll up to sounds and haptics, then tap keyboard feedback. I really love the haptic feedback for the keyboard. This will provide physical feedback when you type. I don't always wanna send text messages from my phone. Can I send them from another device? You sure can. Let's go back to the main page of settings, scroll down, and tap on messages, then tap text message forwarding. Here you can choose the devices you want to be able to send and receive text messages from. While we're here, let's turn on another great messaging feature. Tap back upper left-hand corner of the screen, scroll down and turn on the switch next to filter unknown senders. This separates messages from people who aren't in your contacts and puts them in a separate folder in the messages app. It's a great way to separate your spam text from the conversations you actually care about. Here's another great time-saving feature. Tap back to settings upper left-hand corner of the screen, then tap on passwords, use face ID to get in there, and then tap password options at the top of the screen. Turn on the switch next to autofill passwords. When this is on, you can quickly fill in passwords that are saved in iCloud Keychain, in Google Chrome for your PC users, or in a password manager like LastPass. It'll save you a lot of time, especially if you use those suggested passwords that are just a bunch of random letters and numbers. Do you have time for one more time-saving feature? You do now. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down, and tap on camera, then tap preserve settings and turn on the switch next to camera mode. When this is on, the camera app opens in the same mode you used last, like video or portrait, instead of reverting back to photo every time. It's especially useful if you take a lot of videos. At the very bottom of this menu, turn on the switch next to live photo. By default, live photo turns on when you close and reopen the camera app. Live photos are designed for taking pictures of an action shot. So they're actually not photos at all, they're short videos. And Apple wants you to take live photos because they fill up your iCloud storage really fast and Apple is happy to sell you more of that. I hate live photos, you'd probably do too. After turning on the switch next to live photo, make sure to go into the camera app and just tap that live photo button. You'll know it's off when there's a line through it and it says live off on the screen. We're going to get to that life-saving feature we promised you in just a moment, but first a really important privacy setting. Yep, let's go back to the settings app. Tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap mail. Then tap privacy protection and make sure the switch next to protect mail activity is on. Protect mail activity makes it extremely difficult for companies to track your behavior after you open an email. We've teased it for long enough. Let's go back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap emergency SOS. Turn on the switch next to call with five presses. Now, when you rapidly press the side button five times, 
you'll activate emergency SOS. If you're ever in an emergency and we hope that doesn't happen to you, it's a lot easier to rapidly press that side button five times than to press and hold two buttons and then to slide a slider. One time I was walking through an airport and I set this off accidentally. If you do set it off, your iPhone won't call emergency services immediately. It'll play this really loud alarm that you won't miss. It only plays that though if countdown sound is on. Make sure you leave that switch on. If you prefer, there's also the call with hold option, which triggers emergency SOS when you press and hold the side button and volume down button simultaneously. We think it's easier to trigger accidentally though, because it's so similar to the way that you turn off or hard reset your iPhone. But there's another extremely important iOS 16 feature, not one we recommend turning on immediately, but something you should really keep in your back pocket. Let's tap back to settings, upper left-hand corner of the screen, then tap privacy and security. Scroll down until you see Lockdown mode, tap on that. This is a setting you should only turn on if you're being targeted by a highly sophisticated cyber attack. 99% of iPhone users will never have to worry about this setting. To learn more about the signs of an iPhone hack, check out our video called Signs Your Phone Has Been Hacked. We're very good at titling videos. But next, a really important iOS 16 setting. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap on notes. Then tap password and turn on the switch next to use Face ID. When this is on, you can access your notes using Face ID instead of a custom password or passcode. You'll save literally seconds of time. Every second counts, and we'll hope you spend some of those seconds watching our other video about settings you need to turn off now. That is appearing on the screen. Check it out, you'll love it.